Zach Life Beat Depression. It's day 824 and we're back for more with another somatic healing session to wipe out depression. Thank you so much everybody for tuning in now. Anyone who's tuning in later, as you know, it's a martial arts or mental health show. We like to focus in on those mental health tools first and foremost because mental health is should be our top priority, right? It should be our number one. Without it, everything else uh, doesn't matter. Everything else falters. If we don't put ourselves and our mental health first and make that our top priority, then the rest of life is going to be stressful and very difficult. <laughs> It'll be a lot easier when we start taking care of our minds and our bodies and becoming more confident, more empowered, uh, self-validated individuals who are at peace in their mind. So some ways that we can get to that peace, some ways that we can help ourselves free ourselves of the burdens of uh, serotonin imbalance is with some free mental health tools. First one that we always practice on the show, and it's a great one to practice daily, is gratitude. So gratitude first and foremost going out to those who are here now with me. First people in, be good to people, be good to yourself. My brother Victor out here on the East Coast, appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, if you don't know Victor or this account, be good to people, be good to yourself, he wrote a book that has a great initiative to help people enjoy a better quality of life. So check it out. It's on Amazon. Um, and check out his account so you can find out other ways you can get access to that book. I read it myself. It's great. It's got a lot of cool tips, practical tips you can use in everyday life to kind of improve your life experience. So uh, thank you so much for that. Gratitude to you, Victor. Gratitude for your support. Gratitude for the book and the positive energy and light you put out into the world. Super grateful for that. I'm trying my best to do the same thing out here. We may be on different paths, but we're heading in the same direction. So thank you, Victor, for being there and for tuning in. Also, shout out to Lisa the Luminary, Becca Bookleaf, Fit Body Works. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for catching the show and for your support. You are all part of my gratitude section today, and I want to mention specific gratitude to Fit Body Works for allowing me to come out, share in their space, enjoy their program, get a taste of what they've got going on there. Uh, it's a very cool, very great environment, very friendly people there, a great place to learn, to practice your Muay Thai, to improve your physical health. If you're looking for a great way to get in shape and have fun at the same time, check out Fit Body Works if you're in the Belleville, New Jersey area. And you can contact, check them out on their page and figure out when they're open. I'm not sure what your hours are, but uh, if you got them, let us know up in the comments section. I appreciate you. So much. Thank you. And shout out as well to Mad With Hats. Thank you for being here. Everybody uh, who's here now. So that was my gratitude section. Those are the things I'm grateful for today. Go ahead and think about the things you're grateful for, and that'll help put you in that positive mindset before we move into the lesson. Second mental health tool we always talk about on every single show, progress tracking. Keeping track of the number of days you accomplish your daily task, your daily goal that builds you up. It's been 824 days of consecutive training for me, Sackman, out here. Since I started on that day one, I made that dedication to hit the bag every single day for the rest of my life, train every single day for the rest of my life until depression was wiped out from the face of the planet. And the reason I was able to make a lifelong dedication and continue with it and stick to it for 824 days is because I recognized how it helped me mentally and physically and emotionally. I, I took note. I became aware of the positive impact that I was creating for myself through this routine. If I didn't have that self-awareness, if I didn't take time to check in and see how I was feeling directly after I exercised, then I probably would not have made that type of dedication because <laughs> it's literally the rest of my life. But because it improves my life every single day, I'm more than happy and more than excited about continuing to accomplish that goal. So that's something that you can do for yourself if you have a self-care routine. Maybe it's this class. Maybe it's heavy bag time. Maybe it's quality time with Bob or the mini sack. Maybe it's quality time with the big sack. Who knows? But if you've got a self-care routine, something you can do is really check in on yourself before, during, and after the, after the event. So check in on how you're feeling before you start training. During training, take a moment and check in and see how you're feeling. What are your thoughts? Is your mind clear? Are you feeling like you've been relieved? Did you get into that flow state? And then after it's over, check in on how you're feeling. Are you less stressful than when you started? Do you feel like you felt that, like you got a release from the activity that you took part in? And so if you become aware of the benefits of that 
and you feel them, right? You take note of how it feels. You can make, it will make that dedication so much easier. That consistency so much easier because it's not just the number of days trained. It's a number of days that you've improved your life. Even if it was just for one minute that day or for the full 10 minutes, or if it was a one hour round, whatever it was, every single step forward counts. So start counting those steps. And if you do count those steps, I can promise you it will add up into more and more proof that you are more resilient and stronger than any lies depression tries to sell you. And if you share that number with others, you can inspire them to do the same, thus improving your environment and again, improving your life experience because you're gonna have better, happier people to be around, right? You're gonna have a happier environment, a better environment to live in. So. Please do use that number tool. It's super powerful for so many reasons. Uh, it's been 824 days for me. Let me know how many days it's been for you out there staying consistent moving forwards. And even if you missed a day, does not matter. It doesn't reset that number to zero, right? Even if I miss a day tomorrow, I still have 824 days of proof that I am unstoppable, right? So do that for yourself too. Keep track of that number. Remember that even if you don't make it consistently, every single day. That number continues to build into more proof that you have overcome, as a matter of fact, the debilitating effects of depression. So please do keep track of that for you. Also, shout out to one I Jose. Thank you for being here. It's uh, fun sparring the other day. It's cool seeing you in class. Can't wait to train again sometime. Thanks for your support. And to Slayer Ken, thanks for being there and checking in on comments. Slayer Ken shared his progress at 432 days consecutive training. Good stuff, brother. Keep on moving ahead. Keep on inspiring others. That's the coolest thing when you share that number. You get to be that change that we want to see in the world. So thank you, Ken, for being here and helping us feel left less alone in the social support system. That being said, let's get into today's lesson. That's enough chat. I'm chatting too much. Uh, today is not supposed to be a rest day. Yesterday was supposed to be a rest day, but I did go ham. I went out to, uh, to Fit Body Works and put in a lot of work and I am super sore, fatigued today, and uh, so I'm gonna dial my intensity down. But it is a normal, normally a higher intensity day, so we're gonna be rolling through some fundamentals, we're gonna be tossing some different combos, working defense and offense at the same time, moving around. But as always with every single session, it's important to dial in to you and give yourself a challenge that meets you where you're at right? Meets you at your skill level, at your pace, at your endurance, at your intensity rating for today. So if you partied hard last night, didn't get enough sleep, or you're drinking alcohol, or you're doing things that would affect your training, take that into consideration and don't set unrealistic expectations uh, as far as output is confirmed. Just try to create your schedule for today based on today right? Your performance today based on how you feel today. So we want to make sure we're giving ourselves a challenge and we're not taking it too easy, but we also don't want to overwork because we can wind up with more anxiety. So we want to find that zone in between overwork and underwork. Right in the middle, we can find that flow zone, make progress every day, make it fun, and enjoy that self-care routine. That being said, let's pop into Muay Thai stance and talk about some of the basics we're going to cover today. We'll be Practicing with the jab, the cross, the jab, and then we're going to talk about defending, right? Slipping a punch and then countering back with a cross or slipping a punch, stepping in to counter with a jab. A couple different counters out there. We'll kind of flow through as we go. You can drill three things. Uh, you can moderate three things to your intensity to challenge yourself. The volume of punches you're throwing, the speed of those punches and kicks, and the intensity. That's the last one. The intensity behind those punches and kicks. So how much woof, right? How much body you're putting behind it, how fast you're tossing those hands, and also the number of strikes. If I'm throwing one jab, feel free to throw a double jab. Feel free to free to throw a triple jab if you want. Boom. And then roll into the next one. If I'm throwing a jab cross, double it up. Boom, boom, boom. You know, triple it up. Modify it. Make it a challenge for you. Right? Because we're all on different levels, but we're all growing together and we can all support each other in that growth. We, but we've got to make sure it's for us. We've got to show up for us first. That way we can help others. So that being said, jabs and crosses, slips, counters, maybe a couple of hooks will work in there. Maybe a couple of upper cuts. We'll see how it goes. But we're sticking to our standard rounds, three rounds each, three minutes each. Shout out to Gavin Quanch. Thank you, Gavin Quach. Thank you for joining. Appreciate your support. Make sure you guys have water out there. And we're going to get into it right now. We'll have that fighting spirit of the 80s coming through the retro boom box. Salute to the fuel our progress. 
Dang, let's do this thing. Alright. There we go. Hopefully that's loud and clear. Go ahead and pop in to your Muay Thai stance and visualize that opponent in front of you. Remember, always visualize that opponent. Always visualize making contact with the proper part of the fist, those top two knuckles. Keeping the wrist straight, turning those fists over, and making contact with that visualized opponent. To keep it mental health focused, assign that opponent a name, depression dummy or anxiety dummy, whatever it is you want to work on today. We're going to knock those lies right out of that stupid dummy's face. All right, pop into stance, square up. Squared hips, squared shoulders with that opponent. Step into your balance point tie stance, tuck the chin, curl the hips, keep those knees bent, and start shifting your weight back and forth. Get that Muay Thai shuffle going. Develop that rhythm, right? Shift the weight from the front foot to the back foot. Weights on the ball of the foot. Knees slightly bent, heels slightly raised. Step in for the one. Twisting through the shoulders and hips, extending that lead fist forward. Turn it over and squeeze on impact. Rotate back to stance, and we're gonna pick up the pace and keep it moving forward. One, two, bam, bam. Jab and cross, stepping into the one, rotating right on through to the two. You notice the back foot turns. We'll return back to our balanced stance. Step for the one, rotate right on through to the two, and remember, bring those hands back after each strike. Keep it going. One, two, one, two, and keep it moving around. If you're advanced, work horizontal movement in there too, right? Lateral, horizontal, get closer, get further away. Move around and practice your one, two. Fundamentals are always important at any skill level. <laughs> Boom, start doubling them up and moderating to your level. Hit them with the one, two. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> Back to stance, keep the guard high, chin tucked. Visualize that opponent and keep moving, keep that pace. Find that rhythm, breathe in the nose, out the mouth. Step forwards for the one, two. And now we're gonna start covering up. Thinking about an incoming jab, we wanna slip to the outside of that jab. Remember, whichever punch they're throwing at us, if we slip to the outside of it, then we leave them open for a counter attack, right? So don't slip inside, you'll be slipping into the danger zone. We're gonna think about an incoming jab, right? Jab's coming this way if they're an orthodox fighter. So we're gonna slip to the outside of that jab, slipping that head off the center line, turn the shoulders to the outside of the jab, and then we're gonna fire back, boom, with a nice powerful cross right over that arm that's extended out for the jab. Back to stance, guard high. Step for the one, two. Back to stance, one, two. Back to stance, one, two. Now slip the jab, boom, to the outside, and fire back with a nice overhand uh, straight cross punch there. Back to stance. One, two. Down that center line. Chin tuck. One, two. One, two. One, two. And slip the jab. Boom. And counter with a nice bomb cross. When we're slipping to the outside, which means there's nothing out here that's going to be able to hit us, right? We're on the outside of their body. If they just threw the jab and they stepped into it, they're open for attack. They also have no weapons over here to attack us with. So that means when we get to the outside, we can take this fist and freely move it a little away from our face and fire it, bomb, over the top for that nice counter shot. Back to stance, one, two, slip and counter, slip, boom, counter, and that's the end of round one. Catch your breath, drink some water. Shout out to Missy Chafo. And shout out to Dania, Dana, thank you for joining. And Luca, thank you so much for joining. Tim, I can do it, but I not can hire people. So that's right, we don't hire people unless we are training together in a controlled training environment and you have consent from the other person. It's the only time that you want to hire people. For Luca out there, the goal is not to just go around fighting everybody. The goal is to be able to defend yourself if you're attacked, right? The goal is to be able to be in physical shape and be in mental shape that we can handle the stresses of life, we can handle the anxiety of life, and if we are in a fight or flight situation, we can remain with a clear, calm head and make logical decisions. But you can hire our people's right. That's what Luca said. We got eight seconds, Luca. We'll have this conversation later. <laughs> it's complicated. You generally don't want to go around attacking people, but if it's self-defense, you can. You're allowed to fight back. Let's pop back into it. Back into stance. We're gonna start off with that one-two and slip right into the counter. Right. So one step in for the one. Rotate through for the two. Turn the body and slip. 
Now when you slip, we want to get the head just off the center line, just the distance of the fist, right? So if we've got an incoming jab coming at you, we just need to move this much from here to here. Don't do this big overarching thing where we lean over our center of balance. Keep it nice and balanced, nice and tight. Step for the one, the two, slip out of the way of that fist, right? Heads off the center line. Notice too, I didn't block my vision. I didn't do this, I didn't look away. I still wanna keep an eye on my opponent so that I don't lose track of what they're doing. So slip the head off the line and then we're gonna fire back with this nice, boom, overhand uh, cross. And for that overhand cross, we're throwing it up and over, turning it all the way over there. You see the knuckles going way, all the way around. Not just straight, but all the way around so we can contact with those large two knuckles. Back to stance, throw the one, two. One, two, one, two, slip, counter. One, two, slip, counter, boom. Throw that counter up and over. Reason we throw it over is because their jab arm is extended and if they've got good defense and offense, they're rolling that shoulder too, so we need to get over this arm. Can't throw a straight punch when we punch in that arm. Back to stance, hit him with the one, two, pop, pop. One, two, slip, counter. One, two, slip, overhand counter. Back to stance. One, two, one, two. Keep it balanced, keep it moving, let's go. One, two, one, two, slip, counter. One, two, slip, counter. Back to stance. One, two, one, two. One, two, slip, counter. One, two, slip, counter. Boom, back to stance. Keep it balanced at all times. We're gonna start mixing it up and we're gonna start slipping the cross this time. So hit him with the one, two, pop, pop. And then imagine a cross coming in from an orthodox opponent, right? Orthodox opponent, if that cross is coming in, it's coming in from this angle and it's gonna leave them all exposed on that side, right? They're in front of us, so leave them exposed on this side. So when that cross comes in, we're gonna do the same thing, slip to the outside of that cross that's exposing their weakness, and we can fire back with a hook. This is a good time for a nice hook, because we're preloading, right, when we turn and dodge that cross, we're preloading on the slip, and then this is a good time, we can fire back, boom, fire back with that hook as you rotate back to your balance centered stance. Now you can toss that hook multiple ways. You can toss it palm down, you can toss it palm in, you can sink down low and rise up, boom, add some pop, into it some zing on there. A little extra zest on that hook. But practice different ways to throw that hook and try to drop the, try not to drop the hand until you're almost there. Boom, to create that angle. Back to stance, one, two, pop, pop. Oh, almost out of time. Slip the cross and fire back with the hook. Boom, there it is. That's the end of round two. Catch your breath, drink some water, check in on you. Uh, checking in on comments. We got some more comments from Luca. <laughs> I not can, Tim can write. I don't know what that means. Only with other ninjas. Yeah, well, only with consent. That's the golden rule. With consent or in self-defense. I think that covers every aspect. With consent or self-defense. Consent means two people get together and agree to punch each other in the face <laughs> so they can practice their skills and improve their self-defense techniques or get their training in. So with consent or in self-defense. That's it. We're not trying to attack people for no reason, or just because we're mad, or just because whatever. Any other reason, pretty much invalid, right? Violence is a last resort. Violence is something we want to stay away from uh, and avoid at all causes necessary. How to win every street fight. Just like that, done. Works 100% of the time, unless they have a hold of you. Just dip out, that's it. If you need to, if they're too close, teep them, and then dip out, boom. Create that space, create that opening, and, uh, and get to safety. It's not worth it, especially in street situations because you don't know if they're carrying or what's gonna happen. Let's get back on track. Final round, let's work on slipping that cross, right? We're gonna slip our head off the center line. We're gonna fire back, boom, with a hook. And back to stance, guard high, step for the one, two. Pop, pop, chin tucked. Keep that visualized opponent in mind and hit him where it hurts, one, two. Hit that depression dummy right in the face. And remember what you fight for every day. That better quality of life. That quality of life we deserve. Keep those punches going. How do you know what you deserve? It's based on what you give. Let's go, give it your best. One, two, three. Now let's work those slips. One, two, slip the jab. One, two, slip the jab. Fire back with that overhand. Bang. Back to stance, one, two, slip the cross, one, two, slip the cross, and fire back with the hook, 
Whoops. Back to stance, guard high, chin tucked, nice and balanced. Balance, squared hips, squared shoulders. Step in and hit them with the one, two, whoosh, whoosh. Remember, keep those knees slightly bent, heels off the ground so the body can rotate easy. One, two, back to stance. One, two, one, two, one, two. Slip the jab, boom. And now fire back with the overhand, bang. Slip the cross, Whew. Fire back with the hook, bop. Back to stance, keep it centered, keep it balanced. Remember, don't lean in when you're firing back, right? Don't lean in, don't lean in to the hook. Don't lean into the cross. Keep the torso upright, nice and balanced. Step to the one, two, pop, pop. Slip the jab, bang, and then fire. Boom, overhand. No lean, I'm not leaning the body. I'm twisting through the body. We generate our force through rotation, right? Rotation is speed, speed is power. Slip the cross, boom. Slip them across to the outside, they're exposed. I'm gonna fire back with this hook. Whoosh, again. I'm turning through the whole body. I'm turning through the hips but I'm not leaning. I'm not throwing my body forwards and off balance. Keep that balance nice and tight. Hit him with the one, two. Square up, one, two. Square up, one, two. One, two, slip the jab. One, two, slip. One, two, slip the cross. One, two, slip. Boom. One, two, slip the jab. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, slip the cross. Boom, boom, boom. Now one, two, slip the jab and counter with that overhand. One, two, slip, overhand. One, two, slip the cross, counter with the hook. One, two, slip, hook. Boom, with your shadow boxing dummy, go. One, two, slip, one, two, slip, counter, bomb. One, two, slip, counter, bomb. And that's the end of round three. I hope you guys found room to improve and grow out there. I hope you challenged yourself to your skill level and moderated that intensity, moderated that volume and speed, and found fun ways to continue to take care of yourself. Uh, last comment <laughs> from Luca just said run away. Yes, run away is always a great option. <laughs> if you're out in the world and you're faced with danger, run away. There's no harm in running away. There's no reason to stay in a dangerous situation if you have a way out. Get out. Get out of that dangerous situation. None of us can stop a bullet. None of us can stop a knife. You know, we can disarm someone with a knife, maybe, if you've learned that skill set, but you're still taking unnecessary risk by staying in that environment. So, you always want to get away from the danger, away from that dangerous environment and get yourself to a safe environment. Maybe to authorities, maybe to, you know, someone, a, a group of people who can help remedy the situation <laughs> or improve the situation. Call the police, dip out, get a bike, have a bike on hand, jump on the bike, gone. Call the police later, you know, you, there's no reason to put yourself in harm's way. And uh, that's one of the coolest parts about martial arts didn't mean to run there. But the more you learn how to defend yourself, the more you learn how to fight, the less likely you're going to have a fight, right? The less likely you're going to use those things because you're going to be calm and confident and secure in the face of danger. There's no ego there to prove anything. There's no fight or flight. You've got it under control so you can make clear, educated, well-informed decisions. Even if you know very well you can destroy this individual in front of you. There's no need to, right? There's nothing to prove. Just get out. You can get out of that situation. So I don't know if everybody agrees with me, but my thought, my feeling, my inclination, and in my life experience, the more I know about martial arts, the less likely I'm in, I am to get into a street fight. So <laughs> let me know what you think out there. Maybe we'll make a poll out of it. Uh, and checking in on final comments. Yell sack life to confuse them. <laughs> also a good option. Always yell sack life. Just do it all the time. It's a good idea. We can raise awareness. Uh, it can take people by surprise. And who doesn't like a good surprise, right? Uh, be good to people. Victor said, nobody wins in a fight. Absolutely. The goal is avoid a fight, right? Get as far as you can in life without the fight. That's, that's a great idea. Be prepared in case the fight comes to you and you have no other way out. But don't bring, don't, don't go out looking for a fight. That's just a terrible decision uh until next time <laughs> i will catch you guys and girls same sack time same sack channel same sack life sack man out <sighs>